Hello, all of you. The European Union should have as the main goal uh, to enable its citizens to make the best of their lives. And cities and towns are at the forefront of this large ambition. Well, I'm very pleased that the Eurocity Social Forum is meeting now in Lisbon, my hometown, led by a brilliant mayor, a friend of mine, Fernando Medina. And let me tell you that the reason I cannot be with you physically today is because I need to meet the Minister of Social Affairs and uh, this is taking place in Malta and then I need to fly to Strasbourg because I am the Vice President in charge of coordination of the plenary in Strasbourg. But in any case, I'm with you today, like that, with this video, and let me tell you what I really think about my vision, what uh, cities and towns should do in the light of the upcoming European pillar of social rights. I was the rapporteur in the European Parliament, uh, this week we'll receive the proposal coming from the European Commission, but in any case, let me tell you that the Parliament was very clear, with a large majority involving five political groups, backing a big ambition for the European Pillar of Social Rights. And this has a direct implications for a progressive vision on what cities and towns should deliver. First of all, let me just give you the vision. Children. We need to make sure that children, they feel happy where they live. And this means, first of all, to fight, to eradicate child poverty. And then we need to make sure that all children in Europe, they do have access to good education, good health care, and all the necessary pre-school uh, education services. Then we have young people, and this is the big test for Europe, because young people in Europe, they are the most skilled generation, and we need to make the best of their potential. So this is about good education, but also access to quality jobs, and to make sure that whenever they move to new jobs, they are properly supported, and whenever they want to create their own startup or small uh, company, they are also supported. Then you have the bulk of the population, and we need to make sure that whatever their jobs, whatever their sectors, whatever the kind of jobs they have, they need to count on a clear labor contract with fundamental rights respected and the full access to social protection and social services. And finally, you have uh, also the situation of uh, senior citizens, where we need to promote active aging, and where we need to make sure that they can uh, have uh, all the necessary social services to provide quality of life. All over these uh, groups, you need to make sure that poverty will really be combated. And uh, the main concern for this is that we know that this will depend, first of all, on access to good social services, enabling uh, citizens to fully play with their rights. But we also know that whenever someone is really able to uh, get a new job, <coughs> this someone should be also helped. Let me tell you also that in the end, if we want really to make sure that the quality of life and the European way of life will be there, we need to make sure that cities, towns, they work together across member states, networking their experiences, exchanging best practices, but also uh, requiring the necessary means to operate. And this means they depend on good um, financial instruments at local level, national level, but also 
European level. And this is also my final message, is that cities and towns, they need to be vocal now that we are starting to discuss the next community budget to make sure that they will be supported by the European institutions by making exactly this pioneer work on providing good life quality for all their citizens and for those who are living in European cities. This is really the big test for the future but I fully count on Euro cities to deliver on this. Thank you.